So we're doing this the old fashioned way. Old school. We're putting our ear to the ground. We're listening for vibrations. We're freaking praying to Shabernigdo. And we're gonna get to dance. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Gonna be heading out to meet up with Dan here. Gotta do a little podcast thing with him for, I think it's Team America is what we're gonna do. Because I did a little video for one of their songs. Let's see how it goes. Always gotta get some water. <sighs> now off to the car. Da -da -da -da. Unlock. My gosh. Japanese thrash metal band Outrage? How did you know, car? Let's use this Navgon thing here and freaking technology. Can't live with it, can't kill it. Freaking tried to use my navigation thing. It must be overheated or broke or something because it will not let me put the dad dress. Luckily, I got a backup, an old freaking Tom Tom. Dan's gonna be all like, Where the heck are you, homie? I'm gonna be like, I'm stupid and don't have a smartphone. So I have old school technology to navigate. And unfortunately it don't work. It's ridiculous. Either way though, thrash metal this shit up. Oh man. Looks like my sweet, delicious, old school piece of crap don't work either. So we're doing this the old fashioned way. Old school. We're putting our ear to the ground. We're listening for vibrations. We're freaking praying to Shabernigdo, and we're going to get to Dan's. <laughs> Should be a fun time though when I get there. I mean, we're supposed to be talking about Team America World Police. That thing that came out like my junior, senior year in high school. Maybe my senior year. Senior year sounds right. Fun movie. I haven't seen it in forever. Probably since my senior year in high school, but I, you know, I, I randomly made a cover of it for, you know, Independence Day because I thought it'd be fun and I thought it was a funny song. And I thought I'd metal it up and stuff. Put that out. Seemed to get a good reaction, you know, but there's, there's some haters. How often do you have to deal with haters, random people that are watching this? The whole two of them, probably my mom, hi mom. You know? It's kind of painful, but not at the same time. You know, you get over it, but at the same time, it kind of stings a little inside. I don't know. I shouldn't let it bother me. And a lot of the time, I guess it doesn't, but them freaking laughing emoji faces on Facebook, you know what I'm talking about. When people freaking use that and what you're posting isn't funny, it hurts. Now this song is funny, so at first I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, they they think it's funny because it's a great show. And then they leave comments that solidifies that no, 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 they're they're making fun of me. And you know, no matter what you do, everybody's gonna make fun of you somewhere along the line. Even when you're super famous, they'll make fun of you. So people are mean. Don't know why. I try to have fun fun with it more than anything. Cause that's really all you can do is have fun with it. You really shouldn't let it bother you. I mean, life's all about having fun and stuff like that. I try to see if there's any like merit behind their hatred. Like maybe there's just something I'm doing wrong. Or maybe it's just because they're just not my demographic. I don't know. All that I know is that life's about perseverance and you shouldn't really let people bother you whether they you know hate what you do or not always try to be better though I mean hopefully down the line there will be a little bit more people liking what I do versus hating you know around here whenever I do stuff people seem to be pretty nice and enjoy what I'm doing they could be just saying that to not hurt my feelings but who knows I'm not really good at talking to a camera. I'm, I'm trying the best that I can doing this vlog stuff. 
I used to make, when I was in high school, I made cartoons. I put them on Newgrounds. There wasn't YouTube at the time. So I just put stuff on Newgrounds, made a cartoon like Evergeek. This is the second cartoon I ever made. It was poorly animated, absolutely terribly animated. But you know what? That site, there was a lot of people that were like, oh my gosh, man, you're gonna be like the next legendary frog. That was a really popular Newgrounds artist at the time. And they're like, you can be the next one. And it, it really gave me some high spirits, you know? It even got like, they have a, a award system for the week or even the day. And uh, I got uh, like a daily fifth place, which is like the last rank that you can get but it's you you actually get it puts you on the front page with a little thing or it's like these are the top people in pbot's picks uh for the portal bot and you know i got a lot of good recognition and it and it, it made me want to continue and you know when you get encouragement like that it really is motivating even i'm sure there's people that probably thought it was terrible but they could look through the bad that was there and could see merit and uh, I guess potential and they just they put fuel to it and I I just kept going and I kept making cartoons and they got better and better with every one and uh, I, I eventually ended up actually a couple of times getting on the front page and the highest award that I got is I got a daily second place which is really big but my goal when I started was always to get that front page feature where they put you up there for like a couple of weeks or so. And uh, almost everybody on the site sees you when they do that and I got it twice. Really boosted my ego. Now, unfortunately, I also discovered while doing this that uh, while I love the end result of cartoons, I hate making cartoons. So I stopped doing that and you know, I always had this desire uh, to make music I mean, and so I'm, I'm finally capitalizing on that, and it's it's the same thing. It's just you know, it feels like there were bad, there were people that were mean on new grounds, but there was always those people that helped nurture you, and it it doesn't really feel like that exists anymore. It feels like they either hate you or they ignore you. Um, but I keep going anyway, and there's still, every once in a while, there's somebody that'll give you a little bit of encouragement that feels good. And I would just say that, you know, the world needs more encouragement. And even if you don't like stuff, try to find the merit behind it. You know, because a, a lot of people, even people that you, that, you know, even sometimes people want to call people posers. And, uh, you know, even those people that seem like they're posers, there's heart and soul in everything that they do. You know, there, there's a reason that people are doing what they're doing, and maybe it's just because they think that that particular group that they're so-called being a poser towards is really just the people that they think might like what they're doing. But I would be hard-pressed to find people that don't have heart behind what they're doing. Like uh, that Jared Threaten guy, frickin' uh, that kind of did a con <laughs> and tricked a bunch of uh, promoters into thinking that he's more of a big shot than he was and did that European tour. That guy had a lot of heart behind what he was doing. He wouldn't have done it if he didn't have a lot of heart. And a lot of people give him bad raps on that, like even Glenn Fricker. But I listened to his music and I got to say, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was good. There's merit behind it and I like it and I'm looking forward to seeing other stuff that that man does. And I mean, what he did was probably not the best way to do it, but if he didn't do that, I wouldn't know who he was. I would have never heard his music. There's a chance I might have, but you know, I don't know. But I, the whole reason that I saw it was because of that stunt he pulled. <laughs> and I ended up enjoying it. And you know, you got a bunch of people doing like drum covers and even uh, full on covers of that song. You know, maybe it was his little 15 minutes, 15 seconds, what have you of fame, but is it's cool to achieve stuff like that and so I guess that's kind of a tangent but really you know it's good to have motivation and stuff and I don't think that it's right to uh, to make fun of people for being artistic and albeit I'm sure I was guilty of that when I was younger but you know when you get older you should you should be a little bit above that at least don't be nasty like, don't literally do... Think about the motivation of why you're saying what you're saying. Are you saying it because 
you know, it needs to be said or you're trying to be helpful or are you just saying it because you like the idea of making this person cry? I don't think that's right. But anyway, that, I guess that was a little tangent. It's something on my mind. Uh, I know I got a friend of mine, actually, uh, Jeremy Smith, Jay Smith. He's a rapper out here. He's really good, and he just wrote a song that I think fits perfectly with that kind of uh, mentality and the climate that we're in and everything, too, where it's pretty much an anti-haters song. It is amazing. It's got great lyricism to it. You should definitely check out his music. I'll put a link in the, the description for it, too. But come back here and watch the rest of this. Bah. Got all caught up in my talking that I freaking was autopiloting towards the dang interstate. I'm not going to the interstate. I'm going to Dan's. He's it's 2.50 now. He, I'm probably going to be there at freaking 3.30. He's going to be like, you late. And I'm going to be like, I know. It's all my fault. It's all my fault. Use back old school technology from like the freaking 10 years ago. Need to get with the times, but I don't want to spend a bunch of money on a data plan. I, every little penny counts. I, you know, you, you need a house, food, the internet, gas, a car. You might not even need a car necessarily, but I mean, I don't have time for a bus. I'm doing it the old school way and I'm gonna get there. I just, you know, shouldn't be talking and filming, I guess, like everybody else under the sun made myself completely go the wrong route like I'm going to the wrong place I was probably autopiloting like I was going to see uh, Flynn and Kelsey to do some band practice <laughs> uh, it's also been a while since I did much driving since this pandemic with the thing that shall not be named because people want to pretend it don't exist or some shit where'd you come from truck motherfucker sweet song all right let's try this again go the correct route oh man an old-timey cars out here too that's cool oh man the lights out holy shit people are actually driving the way it's supposed to work you know usually when the lights are flashing people will stop like it's a stoplight that's not how it's supposed to work if it's yellow and it's flashing that just means go with caution and if it's red you gotta wait until it's clear before you turn None of this four-way stop stuff that people like to do around here. Don't do that. If you see a flashing ember light, you drive through that, but cautiously in case somebody doesn't, you know, understand the way it works so you don't get hit. Is this the kind of stuff that people like to watch, you know? I never really had the plan to be a YouTuber or anything. My goal is really to just make music and, uh, to do some kind of marketing, I guess, or to play shows to get people to see it. I didn't really want to, you know, be like Stevie T or Fluff or Glenn Fricker. You're nothing like Stevie T or Fluff or Glenn Fricker. Well, I'll show you one for a random person I made up. That'll be great. But yeah, I don't, I'm not really trying or didn't really set out to be a YouTube guy. I don't really want to be a YouTube celebrity. I just want to make music and uh, for people that want to hear it to make people happy I always like to entertain people I was uh, I was in drama I was even uh, the homecoming candidate for drama club in high school imagine that me a homecoming candidate hardly anybody knew who I was <laughs> oh man but, you know, I did plays and stuff like that, and I loved it. It's funny. I have really hardcore stage fright, but I do not get nervous when I do performances like that. I mean, you feel a little bit, but it's not anything like public speaking. Public speaking, I just don't know what the heck to do. But when I'm performing, it it just, it's, it's like time stops inside of me in a euphoric way. I just... I get lost in it and I just have fun. So I guess I'm selfish in doing it because it makes me feel good. But at the same time, there's no point if people don't like it. I just, I want to entertain people, you know? Sure, it makes me feel good, but it's cool to have other people enjoy stuff. You know, it feels like you're contributing. Because like, you know, 
I do graphic design and people hire me to make stuff and a lot of time it's really generic stuff but the highlight of doing it is that there's always somebody that really loves and their day is just made with the sign that you made like it just blows them out of the water they are just grinning from ear to ear can't believe what they got and that is one of the greatest feelings ever because it's like it's not necessarily I mean I'm seeking out to do a good job but it's not like I'm just my whole goal is to just do that always non-stop but when it does happen you, f you feel good and it, it's it's a good thing to do because people deserve happiness you know in America here we're all making less than minimum wage or well the minimum wage is less than what minimum wage should be by a significant margin you know, a lot of people are pretty much just stuck in the grind. We're perpetually poor while owning a bunch of stuff in a supposed rich country. But a lot of us, you know, we don't have a lot going for us. We have chronic depression or we're living paycheck to paycheck. So those little moments of happiness, they're worth it. Shh, okay, I'm getting close to Dan. So this is the part where I got to really pay attention. Note to self. You drive past the school and then you make a left at the stop sign after the school. And that is how you get back home. Yeah. Everything did everything that it could to prevent me from trying to get here. But I did it. Oh shit, what happened? <laughs> My navigation thing that I got because I'm all crappy and old school. It like, it wouldn't work. I guess because it got overheated. Oh, yeah. The touch screen wasn't working. Oh shit. <laughs> so then I tried my other one and I, I was like, oh, but it probably ain't supported anymore, but maybe it'll still pick up a satellite or two. No. I'm like, oh, well, old school way it is. Amen. And then I accidentally autopiloted while talking to this camera thing that I got to document my travels here. Fuck yeah, dude. I like got sidetracked and I drove all the way up like I was going on the interstate to freaking Ohio. Yeah, man. <laughs> You'll have that sometimes. Yeah. It turns the light on in here. Oh, yeah, I gotta go. Behind the scenes of how a podcast is made. It's a pretty interesting way to, d to do it for sure. Having it to where it's like, you play the movie and follow along. It's like special DVD commentary. Yeah, man, I figured it'd be something like different to start like for a podcast. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, there's people that do it, obviously. I mean, it's not by no means my idea or anything. It's just, you know, uh, I, I thought it'd be kind of cool to have like a podcast that's like strictly kind of designed for that. Yeah, I get you. This that way people don't think I'm a fucking weirdo because I got bars in my windows. <laughs> <laughs> We're musicians, Dan. We're automatically weirdos. <laughs> yeah. Edit out the bars if you can. <laughs> Just use my CG budget for I'll that. Never, uh, <laughs> I'll never have a girl over here again. Dude, the right kind of girls would be into it. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> The kind that, uh, you know, look like Elvira. Yeah. yeah, people are crapping on me now. It's great. Like, I've been putting out so much content that I guess it's getting some traction and now I'm getting flack from people. Yeah, I mean, I guess you're bound to have that at some point, you know I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, uh, I, I kind of thought the same thing like when Kid Chris started making fun of us. I was just like, well, I mean, at least I've kind of made it now. Like, yeah. he's actually, like, making fun of me on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably more made it than I've been so far. But, you know, it cracks me up because it's like all I ever hear when I'm trying to like, because I try to figure out like what kind of music do I, does my stuff sound like so I can try to market it towards that kind of demographic. And people are like, I don't know what it sounds like, man. It sounds, it doesn't sound like anything I've ever heard really. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, shit. And then I post it online and try my best. And then it's a bunch of people going, same band. Yeah. Like, what the hell is the same band? It's like <laughs> generic. I'm like, well, I've never been accused of being generic before, but all <laughs> right, apparently I've hit the big time if everybody thinks I sound like everybody else now. There's always got to be some doofus like online that's got to try to cut somebody down because like they're jealous that they can't do it or something. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I, I think it's kind of what it boils down to. Well, what really is uh, upsetting to me is, is that like some of the guys that are doing it, I like the side because I try to, when I get that, I try to think, well, maybe uh, I'm... I'm my stuff's appearing to the wrong people. Mm -hmm. So I try to look at what they're into and stuff like that. And some of them are musicians. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, yeah, why? You know, I, why well, would you be <laughs> crapping on somebody else when you're in the same field? 
That's the thing, dude. I mean, like, you're gonna you're gonna get more out of like lifting people up instead of like tearing them down. I think. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I, I I talked on it on this thing on the way here, but like, I know in high school I did animations and stuff, and uh, like. They were crappy because I was in high school and I was just learning how to do it. And Dude, it was on, like your shit was awesome in high school. Yeah, like I thought. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I mean, if you compare it to like pro people, which is what I'm assuming people are doing now to people, mm-hmm. is whenever you do anything, they just compare you to the biggest shot ever. Yeah. Like these people, even if the thing was crudely animated, they there was there's still people that hated it, but there was people that found some merit into it and encouraged me. And, like, I think that needs to exist more, and it feels like that may be disappearing. Yeah. People are more inclined to just be negative versus to give any positives, nurturing positives. Yeah, you know, I try, uh, I try my damnedest, dude, not to, like, be negative on the internet. Sometimes I can't help it, because, like, I just, I see shit that just aggravates me, and I'm just like, man, I gotta say something, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. But, but you know, I, I mean, I really do. I try my best to, like, just try to avoid all that, just try to just post funny memes or music or something, you know what I mean? It's just... It's not worth going down some of those rabbit holes because you're always going to have somebody that disagrees with you or you know calls you an idiot or something for having a different opinion. So yeah, you know, exactly. It's just not even worth it. Really. I think I won over one of the people though because they were like giving me crap and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, sh- shit. I guess I need to add like some bagpipe solos <laughs> and like some EDM. That's what the kids are into, right? And he was like, just add a breakdown. That's what everybody loves. Well, so was- then I put a tab of like a bunch of zeros. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there was a guy who, uh, it was like during the time like when Kid Chris was making fun of us a lot. Yeah. I think it was like one of his minions that was like leaving comments on uh, our YouTube channel. And it was uh, when we just like posted uh, Dark Angel, I think. Yeah. He was like, he said something along the lines of like, yeah, this, this song makes me sick. Sick to my stomach. And I said, well, are, are you pregnant? <laughs> and like, he, he deleted his comment. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's dude, a great like, dude, response. Don't, don't poke the bear. The bear's going to poke back. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to find witty responses like that, or even just rolling with it. Like, yeah. if they're saying I'm, like, stupid or stuff, I'm like, dang, you're right, what were they thinking? Yeah. Damn, bro, I never thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> I never realized how stupid I was. <laughs> exactly. Frickin' brought it to my attention. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the, I believe this is the fourth installment of Toxic Taste. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different. Fast Eddie is not here with us, but... I have a very suitable replacement today. His name's Kurt Wonderly, and yeah. he has a band called Nexus Lives, if you guys haven't heard of him. How you doing today, Kurt? Oh, I am doing fantastic, Dan. Awesome, man. Yeah, we're uh, we're going to do something uh, a little different today. Uh, we usually do the, the cheese ball horror movies, but uh, we are we don't really have any set rules or guidelines with this podcast, so... Remember when Paramount owned King's Island out here? <laughs> Dude, I do, man, because, like, the, uh, the rides were a lot cooler than I thought because, like, they were named after movies and stuff, but now it's like they kind of changed, like, all the names of everything to, like, generic versions of it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's like, I'll look at them and I'll be like, oh, look, it's Drop Zone. Oh, wait, no, it's not. It's Drop Tower now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did they keep Top Gun as Top Gun or is that something else now? Uh, Top Gun is there, but it, it, they call it, like, Flight school or something yeah, like that yeah come on you know <laughs> it was awesome walking it's like it's such a quick and short ride but like just walking and going down 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 for like the whole walk to the ride was yeah, remember, great <laughs> yeah i remember being like so hyped like when i was a kid when they first opened that and uh you know like you're waiting in line like they're showing like clips of the, the movie and stuff on the screens like as you're like waiting to get in yeah Got that filmed and everything, well, didn't get it filmed. Got that recorded and, uh, you know, got that little podcast in the back. It was really nice hanging out with Dan and stuff like that. If you like what you saw, I'll be sure to check out one of these two videos that we got on the side here. You know, they're pretty good. We got one on the top that I set up and then the one on the bottom is the one that YouTube thinks that you should check out the most. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Kurt from Nexus Lives. Peace.